As we continue our story, it's perhaps a good idea to know more about Aunt Elfie and where she came from. Let's go back in time to the little stone cottage where she lived. Now it's important to know that years later, Aunt Elfie's house became the house that Bizzo and Bindi and Crikey all called home. How's that for a little twist of fate? A dog barked. Marie opened her eyes slowly. Two green eyes came close to hers as a small pink nose gently touched her nose. A calico cat with long silky hair rubbed its face against Marie's cheek. The dream of walking through a summer meadow faded to the room where she lay in her grandmother's bed, kept warm with her mother's flowered comforter. The coldness seeped through the flannel pajamas as Marie cast the warm covers aside and swung her legs to the side of the bed. She felt for her glasses on the nightstand. As always, they were beside the box of cat treats. Marie placed the glasses on the bridge of her nose, fitting perfectly into the small dents on her weathered face. Glancing out the window, her eyes indeed beheld the snow, clinging to tree branches and sparkling on the ground with what was left of the moonlight. As she turned to find her slippers, an especially bright spark, like a flash, seemed to leap from the glistening snow. Marie blinked several times and looked out the window again. There was no glare, no fire, no spots before her eyes. Odd. Marie was startled back into her morning ritual of giving Jinx the calico cat her morning treats. No, Jinx, I didn't forget you, Marie said with a sleepy smile as she shuffled to the kitchen to prepare her morning tea. Marie mused about the flash she saw. It was odd and startling, yet beautiful in some way. Oh well, kettle full and on the stove, back to the business of the birds. A large plastic container sat by the back door, a small metal bucket beside it. Marie opened the top and scooped three big helpings of bird seed into the metal bucket. Swoop! went the first scoop. The sound reminded Marie of a heavy rainfall. Swoop! The bird seed rained into the metal bucket a second time. Swoop! Marie laughed as she now noted that the heavy rain of seed hitting the bucket also sounded like snow being shoveled from her walk. That would be another task to do later in the day. Slippers off, boots on, as well as the tattered coat that hung on a peg beside the container of seed. Opening the back door, the rush of cold air tingled Marie's face. Bucket of seed in hand, she marched through the new snow, toward the feeders that were shared by the jays, cardinals, chickadees, squirrels, and chipmunks. Marie reached up and pulled down a feeder to fill. Something about the air after a snow seemed refreshing, cleaner, even though it tickled her nose. Feeders full, she crunched through the snow toward the warmth of her house. She looked up at the sky briefly, and as she looked into the snow-covered pine, the bright flash appeared again in the corner of her eye. Marie was startled. Oh! There was no moonlight. The sun was not visible yet. This time, along with the flash, it felt like someone was watching her. Marie laughed. <laughs> of course someone is watching. All the birds and animals know I just filled the feeder and are waiting to flock to the seed after I go inside. Marie opened the door. Warm air from the house washed over her cold face. Boots off, slippers on, coat on the peg. The water was perfect for hot tea that would warm her from the inside out. The neighbor's dog, Frankie, would be dropped off soon. Time to put on my daytime clothes. Marie sat in her rocking chair, 
sipping warm ginger tea as she looked out the window. Birds, squirrels, and chipmunks surrounded the feeder outside, clamoring for the morsels Marie had put in it earlier. Snow was falling, covering her footprints with light dust. Jinx, the calico cat, purred on her lap, her long silky fur a welcome and familiar comfort. Thump, thump, went Frankie's tail. Frankie had been Marie's alarm clock for the last two years. A big brown dog of mixed heritage, Frankie was a sweet goofball with floppy ears, a black muzzle, a splash of white on his chest, and one white paw. Marie would watch Frankie during the day while her neighbors, Jamie and Brian, went downtown to work. Marie and Jinx had known Frankie since he was a puppy. He was a member of their extended family. Marie thought about the flashes she saw earlier that morning. Sometimes passing cars with their headlights on make a reflection through the window. Or maybe it was the spirit of one of my friends who crossed over, coming back to check on me. Looking back down at Jinx curled on her lap, Marie smiled with a sigh. I would be perfectly content to sit here with you warming my lap all day, sipping tea and watching the birds. However, I feel that I would like to be a little more productive today. Marie lifted Jinx gently from her lap and set her down beside Frankie. Jinx was mildly annoyed and announced to Marie, Well, fine. Go do what you need to do. It's time for me to clean Frankie's ears anyway. Marie stopped, eyebrows raised, and looked at Jinx. Did you just talk to me? Jinx looked at Marie, <coughs> then promptly turned and began to lick Frankie's ears. Marie turned and walked to the kitchen. I think I need to eat a little something. Pumpernickel toast with a dollop of cottage cheese, a sprinkle of pepper, sometimes topped with a slice of ripe tomato, was her everyday breakfast. Marie opened the refrigerator door to get the cottage cheese. She heard the clicking of Frankie's nails, as she knew both fur friends would soon investigate the kitchen activity. Marie turned as she shut the refrigerator door, cottage cheese container in hand. Flash! This time, it seemed to come from the refrigerator. The light bulb must be wearing out, she said, dismissing it, and proceeded to prepare her toast. Frankie and Jinx were watching Marie intently, hoping a bit of cheese or perhaps a piece of crust would fall to the floor. None did this time. Plate of toast in one hand, cup of tea in the other, Marie sat at the small green and chrome table. Frankie and Jinx watched Marie as she bit into the toast with a crunch. I think this is a good day to make a batch of cookies. Frankie perked his ears. I think that is an excellent idea, he said out loud with a big doggy smile. The kind with lots of butter, added Jinx. Marie stopped chewing. Her eyes darted back and forth from Jinx to Frankie rapidly in disbelief. It seemed that they had both just spoken to her. Perhaps I need to be a little more social. I've been living by myself for a long time. <laughs> Marie took the bite that was left of the toast and cottage cheese and divided it for Frankie and Jinx. This, too, was a normal morning ritual. However, this particular morning was proving to be not so normal. Marie gathered her plate and cup and took them to the sink to wash. Okay, Frankie, it's time for us to venture outside. Frankie sprung up and sat at the door while Marie donned the tattered coat on the peg, slippers off, boots on. She clipped his leash onto his collar and opened the door. Marie and Frankie stepped outside to a flurry of squirrels scampering up trees, and jays squawked their annoyance as they flew to low-hanging branches. Cardinals sought to decorate the snow-covered pine. The chickadees 
joined the other birds, taking flight from the feeder and seeking refuge after being startled by the closing door. Noting the animals were out of reach, Marie unclipped Frankie's leash from his collar with a snap. Go on, do your business. Frankie leapt at this cue, darting around the snow-covered yard, pausing to sniff under the feeder where the small animals had been having their breakfast. I love this white fluff! Frankie barked to himself as he snatched a falling snowflake. Marie giggled as she watched Frankie plow through the fresh powder with his nose, then roll on his back, kicking his paws to the sky, wiggling with delight and no thought for the squirrels that were watching him with curiosity. Marie! A deep voice startled Marie to her left. Hmm. Only a jay sat on a lower branch. You surely did not say my name. Replied the jay. Flash! Seared the light from her right. Marie jerked her head toward its direction. A gray squirrel huddled in the branch spoke in a high squeaky voice. We would appreciate the both of you going back inside so we can finish our task of gathering seeds after Frankie does his business. Marie replied automatically, not seeming to realize that she was having a conversation with a squirrel. Well, he is doing that right now by the back fence, chirped the gray squirrel. Excuse me, squirrel, but I need to clean that up, Marie said as she picked up a small shovel and bucket. Yes, yes, we appreciate that, thanked the squirrel as he scampered up the tree. Marie watched as he disappeared out of sight. Marie's thoughts swirled as she walked toward the back fence. Scooping up the mound and depositing it into the bucket, Marie analyzed the chain of events. Did I really just have words with a squirrel? The flash occurred before the squirrel spoke to me. I know I heard a deep voice call my name. It seems Marie's normal winter's day has been anything but normal. This has been anything but my normal winter's day. And look, it's only 11.45. And it's not even noon. It seems that something mysterious is happening at Marie's house. Flashes of light, animals talking, a deep faraway voice. Who do you think called to Marie? It wasn't me, was it? I guess we'll find out in the next chapter of Bizzo's Holiday Secret, The Visitor. Bizzo's Holiday Secret was written and produced by Bonzer Productions, starring the voices of John Polk, Diane Wasnock and Barb Polk, recorded at Big Bear Studios, editing and sound design by John Polk, music from Envato's Audio Jungle, original cello and violin music by LaTanya Peoples, artwork by Karen Gersh, copyright Bonzer Productions 2022.